Hey guys, it's Ellen. Welcome to my channel. Today's Friday. We're working on Floral Friday. We're doing a Boca Crocus watercolor painting. I go over this step by step. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Also, check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays in the live stream once a month in the top tier for me, as well as download. You can check it out right here. So without further ado, let's get painting some fun purple floral crocus flowers. Okay guys, I'm going to go over my supplies. I have a piece of Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper, 7 by 10 Just taped down with some Scotch Magic Tape on some thin cardboard. Well, it's like a little bit thick cardboard so you can move it around like this. Paper towels. I'll be using uh, Princeton 12 Neptune series, Princeton 8 Long Round series. Uh, we're going to be using some masking fluid and this Liquitex acrylic ink. I have my palette with my paints in them. Everything's in the description box um, and I go with my paints as I use them. And if you don't know what masking fluid is, it's just, it's a fluid you put on your drawing or your whatever area you want on your paper so that the watercolor doesn't go on it. It's like you're painting the background with the masking fluid on top of you. Know, I'll explain it to you in a second when I'm doing it. And you don't want to um, shake it up. You want to pour it into some kind of little thing like this I have here. It's like a, just a cheap old little palette holder for paint because you don't want to keep it open the whole time because it will dry out. So this little tutorial for crocus, you know, I'm going to show you how I draw a crocus. Basically, it's like an oval, almost like a teardrop shape. We're going to just be picturing like we'll have some crocuses kind of like gathered here. So I have some straight lines here. Figure out where I want to put them. Right? And then we'll have some kind of slightly opening crocuses. So you're going to curve up and over and down kind of like that. Like a little, almost like a tool, but it kind of points back in. So like a heart in a way. Then you'll have one back here. We'll have a little yellow stamen in there. We'll have a couple little leaves floating out here. And that would be the crocus. And then here's the, the stem. And then we'll have some leaves, little tiny leaves. We'll put a little tiny crocus, kind of the same thing. A little one like that. We'll put another one, just like the one we had here. So it's kind of like a V, an open V, a little stamen in here. Make the V a little bit bigger. Put some more of those little petals back there. I have the stem kind of bending. And again, the grasses that kind of go with it be like this. And then we'll put a few more crocuses here. I like them kind of like not open. You can have an open one if you want, but um, they're slightly opening. That's how I wanted to do it. So that's an even number. I have four and I got to do odd because that's how I roll. I probably have another kind of closed one. See, almost like a V. And another little petal behind here. And a simple stem. So that's just like a little um, grouping of them. You know, you can put more if you like. I'm going to have some more open ones here. It's up to you guys. Make it your own. Make it unique. Remember the V's. Just a simple little grouping. So whatever you have drawn here, you're going to take the masking fluid, like I said, and put it in one of these little wells. Sound effects and all. Not too much. Close your masking fluid up so you don't get wrecked. Use kind of like a an old crappy brush that you're not going to use anymore that's been kind of worn. And you take the masking fluid and you put a coating of it. And you fill in all the parts of the flower and the stem that you don't, that you want, to, you know, 
kind of paint later on because we're going to be doing some wet on wet in the background for the bokeh look and it's really difficult to try and do it around the flower i mean you could it's just the, it's the flow will be much harder so it's much easier to do it this way see how i'm filling this in i'm gonna fill in the stem and the little leaves too would help don't make it too thick the thinner the better so once you fill all this in you have to let it dry naturally and then we're going to come in and we're going to start to do our wet and wet background we'll remove the masking glue oh one thing i didn't mention that i use you don't need it you don't need it at all you can just use your fingers and or tape is a rubber cement pickup but it's not necessary to have the masking fluid is if you want to do it this technique um you know just like my snowdrop video because somebody asked what is masking fluid i'll do another video on that the do's and don'ts of this it's coming but for now if you have um you can buy the liquid form like i have it's all liquid basically but you can buy this jar for like four dollars on amazon i have a link in here or you can get they have pens they're more expensive but they can make really thin lines so if you have a hard time painting the thin lines you might want to buy the pens all right so i'm gonna fill this all in and come back okay now this is dry let's mix up some paint colors we're gonna need we're gonna need some greens some grays and purple so for green i'll take my cadmium yellow light I'm sorry, deep. I'll put some over here too. So put in two two wells because I'm gonna make dark green and light green. I have peacock blue here. It makes the bright, pretty light green. I'll add some more yellow to that. It's clunking. Now I have yellow here and I'll add some Prussian blue So you get a nice deeper bluish green. I like to add a little burnt umber to that just to tone the blue down a little bit. We are gonna be using this color called neutral tint. It's like a purplish bluish gray. If you don't have that, you can use Payne's gray or just make a gray with your colors, mixing blue and red and some brown. And then we're gonna make purple. I have this color here, bright rose, bright rose mixed with ultramarine blue makes a beautiful purple oh look at that I can make more blue or purple up here and add some more of that color there or you can make a pinky pinky or purple combination of the two okay and then we can play around with adding some Front number. Let's put that. I'm loosening this up. We'll be tapping it in. So, add a little more yellow to my green here. Mixing some burnt number. Like one of a variety of greens. Okay, so we have like a all of the brown green here. Now, this is the fun part. I got the bigger brush, which is the 12. I'm grab some water. You hear that clanking water? And we're going to start to play and also close but have this handy which is the acrylic white titanium <laughs> acrylic titanium white uh, liquitex acrylic ink if you don't have this you can use white gouache if you don't have white gouache maybe you have some white acrylic try that um they'll all work well so i'm gonna just take my brush get this wet so you can go right over this now and i'm just gonna go right over all of this Fairly wet and damp. The whole thing. I'm gonna have fun. This is where the fun stuff happens. You have to have all your colors mixed up though before you go ahead and do this. And then you sing when you do it. Okay, we're gonna put in some grays. See, neutral tint. Playing around with just washing in. It's fairly wet. See that? Some gray coming in and around here. 
I like this color gray because it's like I said it's on the purple edge putting in some of that behind here I'll clean up my brush I'll put some more gray up in here I'll be adding some greens and some of that brown down here and some of the grays so it's kind of like the ground a little dark green too that these guys are sitting on right but we want this kind of like add some green back here see oh yeah green wiggle 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 so i got the gray going here a little green gonna clean up my brush i'll add a little purple so it's almost like you see these crocuses here in the background so i'm grabbing some purple just like that in this part you can kind of play around with adding some greens Gonna grab some more green. You gotta have a good amount of this stuff because it's gonna be soaked up really quickly in the paper. Do my clanking. I'm gonna put a little green back here. More green down here. It's more of this neutral tint. A little bit darker. Grabbing some more of the dark. I'm just playing around with that. I'm take some ultramarine blue and put it in here. It's really kind of all behind here. And down here, some burnt umber, some dark green. Playing around with that. Adding some more green too, and more burnt umber, and some neutral tint. It's getting really dark in that section, right? You don't have to make it those colors. You can make it like a bluish purple. I'm going to be adding some. Now you can flip this around. I'm going to be playing with taking the colors and going up this way. See? Gonna add some of that blue purple. Some neutral tint. All this good stuff. Might want to turn it back around again. Just playing around with ultramarine blue. Get this really loose in the purple. So you can make up grays, purples, blues. I'm playing around with all of that. Maybe a little bit darker where the flowers are emitting some more neutral tint. So when the, we go to paint them, they'll really be highlighted because they're going to be much lighter. So that's some deeper, darker color around these guys. Throw some more color in here. Again, adding some more grays. It could be more bluish gray purple taking that bright rose making it like a purpley blue getting that gray in there can add the green lifting us up I'm gonna put some green bleeding some green back in here it doesn't have to be this dark by the way it could be all purples and blues it could be a little prettier very wet right now but we don't mind it that way because we're going to start to put in some of that really pretty white again i'm going to just add some more purple and why not you can see crocuses over here it's pretty dark over in here right but if you want some bright greens you can throw those in too Don't be afraid to play with the color. <laughs> Maybe add some Prussian blue instead of this neutral tint color. You can play around with that. Dap in. You can splatter some of that color, the blue, with the purple. See what happens. I didn't like it so black. I wanted it more bright colored. Okay. Now we're going to take our... It's very wet, which is perfect. We can take this acrylic ink. I wouldn't take a... I'm sorry, moving stuff around. I wouldn't take um, 
a nice brush I'll take something that's kind of like meh that you've kind of destroyed and use that and you can strategically place them or you can splatter it I always start off splattering first because I want a little more natural and see what happens it should repel and if you want some bigger ones You can just place them. So you can just keep tapping it and gets the circle is gonna grow bigger and bigger. We're gonna be removing paint also for the boga. I really want to kind of lighten this whole area up, so I'm putting a lot over here. We can always we're gonna go back into and like I said and remove some paint. But right now Want some bigger areas? You can just place that in. Put some over by the actual. I'm gonna splatter some more up here. I know it looks kind of snowy, right? <laughs> It will disperse and make that whole area kind of lighter and whiter, which is kind of my goal. I know it seems kind of crazy that you put all that paint in and then splatter it, but that's kind of the goal. So we're going to have to naturally let this dry. We can't like, you know, go too crazy. If you feel like now that right now at this point, this is still too dark for you. You don't like it too dark. You can kind of remove it. See that? And if you want to move it, like, take a nice harder edge brush and circular motion, remove the paint. Well, it's still kind of damp. See, you can grab some water, clean up your brush. Sometimes it's best to wait till it's, you know, drier. But you can still play around with it when it's damp. Or you can also just take a paper towel, roll it up to a ball, remove paint this way. See? Remove it. If you want a bigger section to remove and you think it's really dark, scrunch it and just kind of twist it. And you get this kind of pattern. See that? And still kind of looks hazy. Dispersing the paint color and making see I'm just kind of twisting it. That hazy, see? I feel like that white spot is too goofy. I just kind of push that around. Now it's got a little more hazy. See? That's how you play with it. Buka. Again, kind of tap it. So I'm going to let this dry for a bit. Don't want to get too crazy. If you wanted to like remove some paint, I feel like you have some stems kind of coming over here. Do that. And then we can go in and add some more of the purple crocus color while it's still damp. I might go in and add some more. See? Darker purple. Kind of do the little shapes. Little V shapes. Isn't that pretty? Get a little more concentrated with the color. Even if it just bleeds, it will look nice. Some more over here. Just I'm just doing like a little V, as you can see. Right? Kind of play around with adding some over here too. 
Now those look totally like V's, so I might have to water those down just a little bit and remove it. And then I'll add some green stems and I'll water those down. See how this works? I want those kind of like hazy in the background. We can add some more green. Just like that. All right, at this point, I really need to let it dry. Maybe a little too many spotty spots up there, but we're going for the fun bokeh. So we're gonna let it naturally dry, and then we're gonna come back in. Now see, this is a little hard edge. If you don't want it so hard, you might take your brush, grab a little water, and kind of just circular there. Now it's softer. And here, it doesn't look so hard. Okay, so once that's all dry, then we're gonna take that rubber cement pickup. Sorry, I'm gonna move some of this stuff from the floor. And then we're gonna remove where our crocus is gonna go. See, now you can see. See why I did the masking fluid? This is the fun part. This is why I use this tool because uh, it takes you longer the other way and I'd like to go faster. It makes a lot of noise. <laughs> but look how simple that was. Now you can see the flowers. So at this point, I will grab my Princeton 8 Long Round. And we're just going to mix up some of those purples again. I'm going to grab some more of this bright rose. Just a little bit of this ultramarine blue. Got a little more pinky purple. Water this down. And we already have the other purple. Give me a little more blue on this one. So we want to keep the stems kind of white, but a little more yellow, maybe a little green in there. We're just going to grab those purples and kind of play around with putting the two in. Just going to fill it. I always have a paper towel close by to get the excess water off. So just kind of filling in the petals here. See, the ones we made. I'll just show you one of these. And I'm going to leave this little section here for the yellow paint to go in here for the yellow stamen. I'm going to fill these in. And then I'll go back in and I'll add the hues that make it darker. So you can kind of flush in the the color first. See this little pink color. And then we can go back in and add like some purple or blue on the tippy tip. See, I just use my tip of my brush. I get that darker purple in here. We can use the lighter pinky purple on the bottom. And we'll go and add some deeper tones as we go. And you know each one of them doesn't have to be all pink and the same. You can add like the purple one, to the, the blue or purple in the beginning. And a little more blue if you want. See, I put a little more blue in there. Just grab some ultramarine. Again, adding a little more blue on this one, making them a little bit different. So once you get the colors flushed in, you know, just washed in there. We'll come back and we'll add the shadows and the other tones so it looks like it's more three-dimensional. See, I'm playing around with changing up the colors. Some are more pink and purple, some are more blue and purple. It just gives it a variety. So they don't look stagnant. While we're waiting for these to dry, we can go ahead and play around with the stem. Um, it could be a little bit gray, so we have those grays from before. I always like to tap on the paper towel. And you can add a little yellow too, by the way. So I would have the yellow, yellow loose, this cadmium yellow deep. So grab some grays, zoom in a little bit. 
Put some shadow of the gray tone just right on the stem a little bit. Just the white stem that comes down because you don't want it so white. You can add a little gray to that. Doesn't look kind of weird and fake. And then take a little bit of yellow, mix in with that on the bottom. See, just taking the tip of my brush, got a little yellow, a little gray. The little wisps on the side you see will be green. We'll take that beautiful bright light green that we had and we'll fill that in right here on these lovely green leaves. So this is why we put the masking fluid in so that it really shines. You just kind of fill those in with this pretty green, really bright. You can add the deeper tone kind of in different parts of it just to, so it looks a little more realistic. But I would start off just putting that bright green in first. And all those little leaves. Like almost looks like grass. And a little more green. Blue just to make it green. And then you can, you know, you don't have to just follow the ones that you put in. You can add more. See, just fill in that white spot. And then I can take some darker greens, kind of play around with putting those out. Crisscrossing the one we did. Don't be afraid to do that. Even some browns. So I'm grabbing some darker green. Here we go. So make some darker green ones, crisscrossing. So it looks a little more natural. Put in some burnt umber. See? Burnt umber. Just take any brush and kind of go like that with the movement. Throw a little burnt umber. Wiggle it kind of down at the bottom of the stem. So it's kind of like dirt. See? Grab some burnt umber and some green. I'm kind of shaking my brush like this. So it looks a little more natural. You know, you're going to be playing around with fixing these green stems, making them seem like cute little blades of grass, but they're really stems that go with the crocus. Keeping these stems of the crocus fairly light, you can add a hint of purple in it. See, I'm just going to grab some purple. It's a little gray. It's too light. And purple. A little green. If you want to put a little green in there. Maybe put a little green up in here. So, so then when we have the these all kind of finished, you can go back in with your darker tones. And that would be the one in the background. Because they would be darker than the ones in the foreground. Same thing with the one back here. Make these a little bit darker. You can make the edges of this have a little kind of stripes going down. These ones would be a little bit darker. And then you can edge the other ones. See, I'm kind of just putting the darker tone. Just like that. <laughs> Sound effects. Just grabbing darker tone. Putting a line on the side. Some lines in the middle. Line on the side. Lines in the middle. Line on the edge. Like little streaks. This will be a little bit darker because it's underneath this one. A little shadow. 
and then from the bottom, and then of course the one in the back. So you're going to fill all those in, making sure to leave a little white for the yellow stamen. And go back in again, fill in some of these lines, and then we're going to come back. Okay, so at this point, you know, like I said, you just do the different layers of the purples. Obviously, the darker ones are in the background. You can grab your cadmium yellow deep, just fill in the little stamen inside the serp, little crocus. Not all of them have it. These ones are closed. You can put a little one in here. And if you feel like it's kind of melded in too much, you could go back in, like I said, and add. I'm going to grab some deeper tone color. So I've got that Prussian blue, mix in some neutral tint. A little bit darker. You can kind of go in there with your number eight and really just kind of highlight that crocus. It's just will really pop. See when you paint the really dark color right next to that light color. Play around with that. It's gonna really pop. And just take your time putting it in. Now that you know where it's gonna go. Now at this point, um, you can take and remove some more of the the colors. Actually, I'm going to put a little more here, darker in here, just so this stands out a little more. You can stand up sometimes and see where it lands and see if you like it. See, outline a little bit dark color down in here. Just a little more dramatic. Don't be afraid to play around with that. Now what happens if it ends up here, right? It's got a hard line. What you do is clean off your brush with some water and just kind of slowly kind of bleed it to the color out here. Tap it on the paper towel and then it should blend nicely. Voila. All right, so at this point you can go ahead and remove some more paint so you have more of that bokeh look. And I just clean up my brush. I just grab whatever brush that's kind of a little bit hard. And I show this in the this, this sun uh, snowdrops. You just kind of like go around in a circle and remove some paint. That one might be a little bit harder, but you want a little hard brush in a circular motion. You see it's coming up now. Have your paper towel close by to remove it. like that. See, I'm doing a bigger circle. Bigger circles. And do some out here. That's water helping to remove the paint. And play around. You know, keep removing some paint. And you got that more bokeh look. Bokeh. See, I did some over here. And a little bit bigger. You're just going to play around with doing this. Also, I do want to mention if you feel like you've got too many of these, you know, white dots everywhere, you can go back in and kind of cover some of them if it feels like it's overkill. You see, I removed some of them just because I felt like it was just too much. Just go back in and remove some of them. Leave some, remove some. With the 
depends on how you feel about it. You get some nice bright ones here. You could actually go in and put some white gouache back in. Play around with it. Have fun, guys. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.